Father, we bless you, Lord, we honor you. Yes, you are, we magnify your name, oh God. You are the lion that watches over us, O oh King of glory. We bless your name, oh Lord. We magnify you, oh King of glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration, Lord. You are the lion. Worship, oh God, we must say, Ketalida Bosaya. We give all the praise, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We bless you, King of Glory. We magnify you, oh God. We give all the praise, oh God. We magnify you, Lord. You are worthy, oh God. We give all the praise. We give all the honor. We bless your name, O oh God. Bless you, King of Glory. <laughs> More than my mouth can testify. More than my mind can comprehend. I see the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure this is no the end. More than my mouth can testify. Mm -hmm. More.
Your grace has found us, oh God. Your grace has sustained us. Your grace has redeemed us, oh God. We are so glad that you have found us worthy, O King of glory. We are so glad that, Lord, you did not give up on us. We bless your name and exalt you, everlasting Lord. Your grace has saved us. Your grace has made us to stand on the firm ground. We bless your name and exalt you, O oh God. We ascribe to your grace, O oh King of glory. We ascribe to your grace, O oh my Father. We bless your name, O oh God. Your grace has sustained me. Your grace has redeemed me. Your grace has saved me, O oh God. This evening I'm glad, O oh God. We bless your name and exalt you, King of glory. Reke mosia tali na baria kambori na mosa. Reke mori kama yanta na daba. We are standing here because of the grace of God. We are standing here because of His grace in our lives. So we bless your name, O God. We give all the praise, we give all the honor, we bless you, oh God. Our heart is full of gratitude, our heart is full of gratitude, oh God. We bless your name, Lord. We bless you in Amosia Catala de Ba, Yenda de Debosia Catalina Moria. We give all the honor, we give all the adoration of God. We give all the glory, we give all the honor, we give all the adoration of God. We give all the glory, we give all the honor, we give all the adoration of God. We give all the glory, we give all the honor, we give all the adoration of God. We give all the glory, we give all the honor, we give all the adoration of God.
before you and father we thank you for such a wonderful gift of grace by your grace we are focused on pain by your grace we live oh god by your grace we are saved and redeemed by your grace we are healed of our sicknesses and diseases by your grace we are strong oh god by your grace we overcame satan and all the lies of the enemy we bless you for the grace of god Come on, just give Jesus that kind of an applause and just give him thanksgiving and praise. Come, give him a shout, give him a shout, give him a shout. Hey, give him a shout, give him a shout. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There is that undeniable sense of his presence. The presence of the Lord is in our midst because of the grace of God. While we are worshiping God and giving our hearts to God, our parents, and by the grace of God, are right in this country a few days. Better than that. Let's celebrate better, better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better. We can do better. We can do better. Let us celebrate better. Let us celebrate better. Amen. Dad, we thank you so much for creating time and being here this year. We are so grateful. Mama, our hearts are so thrilled to see you. We thank God has kept you one year plus now, and we are so appreciative to see, to see both of you. We are blessed to be in this place. Welcome and welcome and welcome. Karibu sana. Let's give Jesus another hand for a in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, just very quick before we sit down, I want to take this opportunity to be able to welcome uh, all the, the delegates. Amen? Amen. Well, you can sit down because I can see that. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to be able to Can I have another microphone if this one is not working right. Amen. Yeah, this is better. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for giving us yet an opportunity for us to be able to be in this place as we trust God for that which God has in his heart. And definitely I believe and I know that by the fullness of the masses of God, we're in the right place at the right time, knowing that the Holy Ghost has prepared so much for us in Jesus' name. Every time God gives us an opportunity to come, listen to both of our parents, something happens in our hearts in Jesus' name. It's undeniable that the power of grace is at work. And as we continue on, we trust that many things are going to be every made very clear in our hearts and we're getting stronger and better and brighter in Jesus' name. I want to acknowledge our fellow ministers who have traveled all the way from Uganda. I want to appreciate so much Bishop Ochocho. Please, can you just arise and we just put our hands together for Bishop Ochocho. <laughs> And the church came with a big team from Lira and from Kulu. Amen. Let's give Jesus a better clap offering. The team that have just come from uh, Chocho's, you know, influence and all that. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. It's been a blessing having you here almost every single year when you have a conference. You come and you come with Madame, your wife. Let's give Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ a clap offering for his wife in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, I recognize the overseers that are in our midst to have come together with a bishop. I may not be able to have known all your names, though you introduce yourself, but yes. So the, uh, yes, thank you so much, the overseers. And the bishops, apart from Bishop Ochocho, if you are a bishop and you are there, please. Okay, the reverends. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The pastors. Thank you. The evangelists. Any other leader? <laughs> Thank you so much, and God bless you. you. Can take your seats, and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I want to assure you that God is with us in Jesus' name, and God is going to be able to do a mighty and a strong work in our heart for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Let me also acknowledge uh, the brethren who have come all the way from Nairobi, led by the chief apostle of Nairobi. That is uh, Pastor Comrade. And also Sister Lucy, amen, his wife. Where the Nairobi contingent, I know some of them are still on the way coming. Where the Nairobi people, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, some of them are still on the way coming. Thank you so much for coming. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then the Nakuru team, where's the Nakuru team? That is Pastor Charles and our sister Emily. Thank you so much for... The team that I, that I came from there from Nakuru, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Do we have any other team that has come from Uganda and didn't come with the church? I know that others crossed the border two hours ago, and maybe by around six or so they'll be arriving. So do we have anybody that have come from Uganda? It's not part of, yes, yes, my brother. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Please. Please, just, just, just stand, please. Be upstanding, please. Amen. These wonderful people. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing Pastor, is it Pastor or Reverend? Is it Ray, Grace, Reverend Grace? She's there, she's there. Aha, uh -huh. awesome, awesome. God bless you. Let's give this hand clapping for them, please. Thank you so much, thank you so much. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, then let me recognize also the Weso, the Weso, that is uh, part of the university student from uh, 
to the Wesso evangelistic team. Are you there, please? I know some are coming tomorrow. Just a few were able to come today. Where are the rest of the team? You are more than one? Okay. Where are they? There they are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, what about the host? Are the host there? Are you sure you're there? Are you sure you're there? I want to hear your voice, the host. Amen. Okay, let's give a shout to the host church, please. Where are you? <laughs> okay, be upstanding by the grace of God, the host. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. What about the teenagers? You're not the host, you people. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I think Gilbert, Pastor Gilbert is just uh, coming in, and that is now the team from, Naku, uh, from Kericho. Okay. Well, we thank God they are still, you know, making their way to the church. We thank God for them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. We know by the grace of God that the heavens are opened for the sake of the masses of God and towards what God wants to be able to do and accomplish through these meetings in Jesus' name. And we trust God that he's going to help us to position our hearts so that all that God has, by the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, we are going to be able to receive what is in the mind of God in Jesus' name. And therefore, we want to take a position of faith, putting on our trust in God, knowing that because of his love and his care, he deposited his spirit in us, who is a witness of what is in heaven. And he's also a witness of that which God intends to do on the face of the earth. And as we are in Africa, and especially East and Central Africa, I sincerely believe that God is positioning us to be able to arise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. For us to be able to arise and take our place in the program of God, so that what God wants to be able to achieve through East and Central Africa will be achieved in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why we are able to come all the way. Amen. And I've just remembered that we have a brother, and allow me to be able to say this in Swahili. We have a brother that has come all the way from DRC. Where are you? Where are you, Pastor? Ah, it's right here. All the way from DRC. Dugu karibu sana, karibu sana, karibu sana, karibu sana, karibu sana, karibu sana, mungu wa kubariki sana. Sini kweli mpendwa? Asante, karibu sana. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. So there is something God is doing. And we want to be able to appreciate the masses of God. Amen. And that is why God has positioned mom and dad to be able to become a blessing to us. So that we always come in this place, not because it is just, you know, the annual conference, but God is positioning us and by what he's saying to be able to strengthen our hearts, to give us the courage that is needed, the insight, the revelation and the, the, and the maturity that is needed for us to be able to arise and fulfill the purposes of God in Jesus' name. And I want to take opportunity to be able to declare that Ekasek Conference 2024 is officially opened in Jesus' name. Come on, let's stand and just give Jesus Christ such kind of a mighty, mighty and clap offering. Just blessing the Lord because of uh, the conference. Come on, just give Jesus a mighty and clap offering in Jesus' name. Hey, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hey, hallelujah. God is an awesome God, isn't it? And God has good plans for us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. You can kindly take your seat. And as you do that, I want us to know that our parents, by the mercies of God, God has given them strength. We thank God for that. We love them. We appreciate them. And just trusting God that God is going to be able to give them many, many more years of strength so that God's purposes through them can be able to be fulfilled in our lives as they position themselves to serve us in Jesus' name. Amen. And therefore, I want to take the opportunity as we all stand to be able to welcome mom who is going to take the first leg by the masses of God in Jesus' name. Let's stand 
and welcome mom coming in with such kind of an applause by the grace of God in Jesus name and we appreciate you we appreciate you we thank God for you welcome in Jesus name Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen, amen. Buona sifiwe. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's just bless the name of the Lord. Let's give him thanks for all that he has done for us. I want to thank him for making it possible for us to be here again. Year after year, year after year, year after year. God has been faithful. We thank him for counting us among the living. We thank God because he's a faithful God. We thank God for his benefits. The Bible says, bless the Lord with my soul and do not forget any of his benefits. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you, O God, for all that you have done for us through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are still doing for us at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that we shall be saved to the uttermost. Because you ever live to make intercession for us. We thank you, Lord, because you ever live. Lord, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you are doing on the inside of us. We thank you. The Bible says, if the same spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body by his spirit who lives in you. Lord, we give you thanks. I just want you to go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. Lord, it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Lord, it is because of your mercies. Lord, you have been good to us. Lord, you have been faithful. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, if our tongues, oh God. Lord, Father, we thank you. Oh God, if you had 10,000 tongues, there would not be even enough even to sing your praises. Oh Lord, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. We declare your praises. We say, Lord, your name is great, and your name is greatly to be praised. Father, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. And all the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. All the people say, Lord, Amen. Just go ahead and give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Let the devil know that you are excited to be in God's presence. Bible says the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, we worship you. Father, we give you praise. We magnify your holy name. Lord, we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. God is good. And all of the time. Well, a very good evening to everyone. We are glad to be here again. The last time we were here was last year. Was it April or May or whenever it was? And, you know, it just amazes you how God just keeps his people. How God keeps us, protects us. And, you know, a year has rolled by already. And the Lord will continue to keep us. Bible says they go from strength to strength that appear in Zion. And we are going to be going from strength to to strength. Can someone say amen? Can someone say my eyes will not be dim? My natural forces will not be abated? Can someone say I will not diminish in vigor? Hallelujah. Can someone say I'm going to run, I'm not going to be weary? I'm going to walk and not faint. Hallelujah. But we are glad to be here. Thank you for having us again. And we bless everyone who contributed for this to be a success, to be a reality, not just a possibility. You gave your time, prayers, and you gave your money. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? And we pray for you that all that you have given, all that you have given for this conference, God Almighty will repay you in hundredfold. In the name of Jesus. You will remember this time. And you will say. That was when my finances took another dimension. 
and not for the worse, but for the better. Your poorest days are behind you. You will remember this time. You will remember. You will remember this time. 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 You will remember this time for good and not for evil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will remember, you will say, I know when things began to turn around for me. Amen. You will remember this time. And that is the word of the Lord to you. Can someone say, I receive it? Hallelujah. Can someone say, I receive it? Can someone say, I mix it with faith? And it therefore profits me. The Bible says the same word that was put to us was put to them. But it did not profit them. Some people say, oh, this word is not working for me. Why will it work for you? But from after this conference, every word will start working for you. In Jesus' name. It will no longer be your story that, oh, you know, uh, Mark 11 doesn't work for me. It's going to work for you. Because you are going to work the word. The word of God works for those who work the word. If you put the word of God to work, it's going to work in your life. It says the same gospel, the same word that was put to us, was preached to them, but it did not what? Profit them. God says in his word, he said, give yourself completely to these things. Can we have New King James, please? Praise God. I, I'm, I'm, you know, thank God for old King James, but put it on New King James. Thank you. I know you people love whatever in this place. Praise God. You know, when we need the old King James, we'll tell you, okay? But just let's leave it here and just um, keep it. Some people are even still struggling with New King James. And you want to do old King James. Thou, thou is, does. Anyway, the word of God is going to work for you because you're going to mix it with faith. And it's going to profit you. The Bible says, give yourself wholly to these things that your profiting may appear unto all men. If there's any hunger I have in my heart, it is to see the word of God work. Jesus said these signs will follow you. And not just that, he said you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is somebody with evidence. In law, hearsay, hearsay is not admissible in evidence. It's not about the Jesus whom Paul preaches. You must have evidence. Can someone say amen? And from today, you are going to be a witness. Because your life is going to testify. You're going to have a testimony. That the woman at the well, you're going to say, come and see the man that told me everything, everything I ever did. You're going to have a testimony in Jesus' name. So we are glad to be here. We thank you for your love, your prayers. Good to see Pastor Job and Mama Nelly again. Amen. Good to see them and good to see everybody. Bishop Ochocho, good to see you. And Mama, Amen. The Lord will continue to renew your strength. You see, one thing about when you are in God is that you don't even get old. They saw you last year. You are still looking like how you are even looking. You are looking last year. And some of you are even looking better. Can somebody say amen? And that is your portion. Because you are in Christ. He renews your youth like the eagles. So we are glad to be here. Amen. And God is a faithful God. And... Um, so with the meeting starts now, this afternoon it has already started. Are you people streaming? Okay, because I always forget about that streaming thing. God is good. So we're going to start. How many people remember the theme of the conference? What's the theme? If you are bold and brave and sure of yourself. Pastor Gilbert, what's his theme? Is that who? Is that Pastor Gilbert? You don't know the theme. God is good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul, rise up and praise the Lord. 
you know, some of you are like students who go to school without your books. You know, they should ask you, so what are you here for? Okay, so by tomorrow, Pastor Gilbert will tell me what the theme is. So who can tell me now? Some of you are like, hey, God, God, God. Okay, just to make it quick, Pamela, can you tell me the, just very quick. Where is she? Is that not Pamela? Yes, what's the theme? <laughs> Pastor Joe, I hold you responsible. With microphone, she was looking at her book. With microphone, I saw her bringing her, bringing her something. She said, with microphone. If you knew something, we need microphone. I saw her, she was trying to open somewhere. Yeah, she was opening to something. Sit down. I don't want somebody who will open anything. Somebody was putting up their hands. Is that Mama Mary? You know, it's dark. I can't really, you know. Yes, please stand up, whoever. Yes, let's put our hands together for her. I'm sure you know it. If you don't know it, I'll collect that clap back. Okay, I know you. That's, um. Huh? Janet, God bless you. How are you doing? Okay, you two, you are looking at the book. Okay. Okay, I think I'll blame my husband this time because he gave you a theme that was too long. Which says what? This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Let's put that together for her. Though she's opened the book. Just anyway. So tomorrow, you are going to tell me the theme without opening to anything. Is that okay? So that's why you have a theme. I hope uh, my husband from today will be giving shorter. I think he caused this one. Between Reverend Dad and Pastor Job. <laughs> That the reason is that not true? So can we have it on the screen? The, we are the, anyway, yes, I wanted to commend you people. This is good, very beautiful. I wanted to. I knew there was something I wanted to say. This is beautiful. You know, it's always a good thing when you keep making changes. You know, just a little thing here, a little thing there. It just you are not the same yesterday, today, and forever because you are not God. Because I don't say I'm not God. It's only God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because there's nothing that God needs to change into. But you and I have a lot of changes to do. Can someone say amen? Because we are being conformed to his image. So don't remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is lovely. This is beautiful. Let's celebrate the house. And celebrate everyone who is a part of this. Who has contributed to make this happen by their giving, by their effort, by their labor, by everything. And the Lord will beautify your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We should have that desire for God's house to look beautiful. God said to his people, he said, you all live in, live in sealed houses and my house is run down. So that's why you make money and you put in pockets that have holes. It's in the book of Haggai, I think. Praise the Lord. So it would be hypocrisy for us to come here dancing from one end of the hall to another and not even caring about how the house of God looks. Because we should care about how our house looks. And we should care about how God's house looks. Because the Bible is clear about that in Isaiah. Is this 61? You know, about, you know, the cedar of Lebanon, those things brought to beautify the place of my feet. So let's put hands together for everyone again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now we're going to get into the word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you because the entrance of your word always gives light and illumination. Lord, we thank you. For everyone whom you have brought from DRC, from Uganda, from different parts, and even different parts of Kenya, and people who are still on their way, 
Lord, we thank you that no one is going to go back the same. We release our faith for that. And we say, Lord, the things that you had ordained to happen in this conference, they will happen in Jesus' name. Nothing will be left out. By the help of your Holy Spirit, you will help us. And Lord, as we go into this first session, I ask you to anoint me afresh. I ask you to grant me utterance in Jesus' name. And I ask you to impart grace to every hearer. Thank you for those who have joined us online and those who are still going to um, participate in this hereafter. We ask that the same grace, the same anointing, we also rest upon them. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for revelation, knowledge that you impart to us. Lord, thank you. You're going to help us indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. So the theme for this conference is taken from 1 John chapter 5. Verses, uh, verse 5, verse 5 says, verse 4, sorry. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. The theme is, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. What is the theme? This is the victory. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Verse 5 says, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So you cannot read verse 4 without reading verse 5. You must read the two together. And it also helps you if you read the verse 1 that says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. In case you are wondering who is born of God, am I born of God? Verse 1 answers that, whoever believes. How many people here believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Just wave your hands and say, I believe, I want you to say it, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter, but my father who is in heaven. And I say, you are Peter. And on this rock, the rock of the revelation, hallelujah, of Christ being the son of God, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So that explains again straight away why anyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Because Jesus said the gate of hell shall not prevail against the church. Can somebody say amen? amen. So if you are born of God, you are a world overcomer. Because the one who is born of God is the one that believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, then you are born of God. And because you are born of God, you overcome the world. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing right now, just know that you're going to overcome it. Because the world overcoming faith lives on your inside. It says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is that victory? Our faith. Praise the Lord. Can someone say faith is a victory? Our faith is a victory that has overcome the world. So if you're born again, you're a world overcomer. Nothing should overcome you. Whatever you are facing right now, and let me say this to you up front. You know, I'm sure some of us also streamed while we're having the women's conference back in Kano in March, where the theme for the conference is women of faith. By faith, women receive. Amen. And, you know, you must understand that there's nothing like unchallenged faith. Praise the Lord. Because they would not be using the word overcome if there was nothing to overcome. They wouldn't be using that. You see, one thing I want us to do today, I want us to commit ourselves, to recommit ourselves, in some cases, to reading the Bible. Most Christians don't read the Bible. It's like these days now that you claim to be using your phone to find, you know, to check the, you know, those days we had the Bible. So you will know somebody doesn't read their Bible straight away. But now you bring your phone and then you are on your phone and you claim that you are checking the scriptures. But you see, you must read the Bible. You know, I'm doing the, I'm reading the Bible through the year and it's such a blessing. In fact, the bit I was reading again today Every time you read the Bible, it just, the word of God speaks to you. 
I want you to recommit yourself. And whenever you're reading the Bible, don't just read the Bible. Pray the Ephesians 1, 17 to 23 prayer for yourself. That God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Three things Paul talked about there. What is the hope of his calling? Amen. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of the power, hallelujah, his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Sometimes you say the power that God worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That that's the same power that's at work in you. And when you meditate in these things and revelation comes to you, you begin to make your confession that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is working in me. And that power is what? Effecting a healing and a cure in case you need healing in your body. You just imagine that power working in you. You see, it was the power that God worked in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead. In meditating in that scripture, what came to me, the Bible says, the power that God worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That tells you that everything God does starts from the inside. That tells me that when God raised Christ from the dead, that power did not just come from what it did not work externally. It worked in him and raised him. Hallelujah. That power works in you. That is why everything God does starts from the inside. So you can look at yourself now. Maybe you need healing in your body. And maybe you are, there's still pain after they prayed for you. But when you understand that the power starts working inside you first. You know that something began when hands were laid on you. Can someone say amen? Because that power, the Bible says, the power that God works where? In Christ. God is at work in you. Can somebody say amen? So you must understand that. So there's nothing like unchallenged faith. Faith is going to be challenged. That's why you hear the word, you see the word, otherwise born of God overcomes. If there's nothing to overcome, if you did not face a test, you will not say you passed. You passed because you faced a test. You went through a test. Can somebody say amen? So those words already let us know that there's warfare, there will be challenges. Can someone say amen? And they also let us know that because we're born of God. Can someone say born of God? You know what it means to be born of God? To be fathered by God. That means that you have God's DNA in you. Can someone say amen? You're born of God. You know, I told them in, um, in the UK church, I said that you should expunge from your vocabulary, I'm only human. You are not only human. Amen. You know how we say, oh, I'm only human. How can you be only human? When a third of you is spirit. Amen. You have the Holy Ghost in you. As you are looking at me, you are seated in the heavenly places. The Bible says you are united with Christ. You are one with him. Can somebody say amen? amen. You lay hands on the sick, they recover. How can you be only woman, woman, human? You are not only human. Amen. amen. So don't say that again. Somebody came to my office and said, oh, I've added another thing to the things you said we should not be saying. She said, you told us not to be saying, you know when people say, oh, I can't wait to see you. So then that means you won't see me then. Since you can't wait. I said, you say I'm eager. I'm looking forward to. Don't say I can't wait to see you. So somebody said, ah, now we've added another one. Don't say I'm only human. You are not only human. I hope you heard what I said. I didn't say I'm only woman. Because some of you, human, you know what human means? Somebody said before now, I know I'm not a woman now. Don't say I'm only human. You know what it means? You are not an ordinary person. If you are born again. Do you know when I was thinking about it? You know that people who are in the occult world will never tell you I'm only an ordinary person. They will tell you that you don't know me. <laughs> what you see is more than 
So why would you, a believer, be saying, I'm only human? How many human beings can lay hands on the sick and they will recover? How many human beings can shut their eyes down and talk to God? How many human beings can say, God told me you are this, you are that? And to be accurate, you are not only human. You are more than human. Yes, you have the human side, but you are not only human. You are more than human. You have the gifts of the spirit. We have the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom operating in you. Can someone say amen? amen? So you are not only human. If any problem comes up now, you know, I was in my room with the, was it before we came, and there was something I forgot. I kept saying, God, Holy Ghost, remind me. Holy Ghost, remind me. Holy Ghost, remind me. In fact, I tell you, some of you, some of you will laugh. Because God is interested in every aspect of our lives. You know, preparing for this trip, I had different um, containers. So I had poured a particular cream in a little container, but I did not remember to label it. So when I was now going through my stuff, I, I picked up that thing. I tried to smell it. I tried, what is this cream I put in there? Is it face cream? Is it eye cream? Is it whatever? And I was just praying. Holy Ghost reminded me. And you know what? He reminded me what it was. Some people say we talk about it something more serious. It was serious. So he said, oh, he thought he wanted to say, you know. Yeah. There was a lady like that, you know, she has three girls. And every time there's, the, the, I think her second child, daughter, I always forgot her name. So every time, you know, I, this day I was like, I said, God, remind me. Remind me of this girl's name. I was praying that I'll pray in tongues. I'll pray in tongues. I'll pray in tongues. Then the name came. And it was true. Can someone say amen? amen. Did Jesus not say, we remind you of all things? Did Jesus not say, the helper lives on your inside? He said, I will send you another helper who will live with you for a few days and will abide with you forever. He said, he will not only be with you, he will be inside you. So how will you say, I'm only human? You are not only human. Whatever is born of God, that's what we're saying, overcomes the world. You are born of God, fathered by God, you belong to God, you have, his, you have his DNA in your spirit. Can someone say amen? amen? Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Can someone loudly say, I am born of God? When you leave this place, go and tell someone, you know what? I have news for you. I'm born of God. They say, is that all? Yes. And that's a lot. I am born of God. Hallelujah. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Who is he who overcomes the world? Well, he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. You see, we trivialize a lot of stuff. We make it look like it's that all. <laughs> That's big. You know our problem? We don't meditate in the word. When you have the revelation that you are born of God, when that revelation hits your spirit, oh my God. Somebody said something that Papa Hagen used to say, you will stop reading the Bible to sleep. You will read the Bible, you will not be able to sleep because you will be too excited. Can someone say amen? amen? You will just stand up. You will be like, you know, you know, one day I was reading the Bible, praying that Ephesians 1 prayer. And as I got to what are the riches of his glory, the glory of his inheritance in us. The Holy Ghost just brought, was it Colossians? Yes. That says, this is a mystery that has been hidden for ages. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Ghost jammed those two scriptures together and an explosion took place on my inside. I felt like I was having an out of the body experience. I was so excited. Just me alone in the room. So when revelation hits you, you can't still sit still. Can somebody say amen? amen? The Bible says this new man, this new creation is renewed in knowledge. After what? The image of him who created him. Can someone say the new creation 
is renewed in knowledge. Can you please put that scripture there for me if you get it as I'm talking? Thank you. Put your hands together for these people. Amen. I think they've also improved. I think people have changed around here for good. Amen. Make sure you don't backslide. Please, back up to verse 9. I want to show you something. Okay, okay, leave that one alone. Because I know some of you, I don't want to come under conviction. Don't lie to one another. I'm sure you stop, isn't it? Okay, let's go to verse 9. Go back there in case. Do not lie to one another. Since you have what? Put off the old man with his deeds. The old man. How many people know the old man? Not your dad. The old man. That was the old you. Who you used to be before you got born again. The problem is that that old man, before he left, when Paul said we all, if one died, that old man is dead. Can somebody say amen? Paul said, if somebody dies, then the marriage covenant is over. I lost my brother, my immediate younger brother, I think 17 years ago now, there about, yes. He had a wife, but I cannot refer to her now as my sister-in-law. Because there's no more law binding us. What remains is love, if there's any. And thank God there is, because she was at my birthday celebration all the way from the U.S. She flew, she came to the U.K. But she's not my sister-in-law. Because the law that was there was no more. Because she's no more bound. Because the person she was married to is gone. I want to say to you that the old man is dead. That old man that used to hate people, that used to keep malice, is dead. Tell the devil, that old man is gone. It's like somebody come into a house. Are you listening to me? Maybe somebody used to live in that house. And then you bought the house. Can somebody say amen? And they come knocking and they say, hey, please, I'm looking for Mr. Jones. What do you say? Mr. Jones no longer lives here. Can somebody say amen? Can you tell the devil that person no longer lives here? That one you used to dominate, you used to control, no longer lives here. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That one that used to run away from you and used to be scared of you no longer lives here. That one that before he heard, hey, we'll be under the bed. No longer what? Is somebody hearing me? Before I got saved, you know, I got saved in secondary school. But before that, I used to be very fearful. You know, I, wouldn't, I couldn't sleep in the dark. Whenever they put off the lights, I couldn't go out in the dark. I couldn't whatever. But when I got saved, that fearful person left. Not because hands were laid on me, but I could just look back because I just, suddenly I could get up at the middle of the night. I could, I could do anything. Can somebody say amen? Because that person that used to be fearful is dead. Dead. D-E-A-D. Dead. I mean, if you were living in a house, you bought the house, and let's say the person that used to live there was owing people money, was a thief, and then I came, you say, that person no longer lives there. That is new creation reality. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. But why then do we still struggle? The Bible says sin in our members. Before that old man left, he had trained you. He has trained your mind. That's why I said we should renew our mind. He has trained our bodies to react in a certain way, to respond in a certain way, to operate in certain ways. He has trained our mind to think in certain ways. Some of you, you know, you are experts in suspecting everybody. If somebody says something, you will read something to it. Can somebody say amen? There's a proverb in my, in my language. They said there's more, more behind six than seven. What is behind six is more than seven. And I tell people, there's only seven behind six. But some of you are like that. If they say hello, oh, for them to say hello to me, that means, are you following me? I must have done something if they call your name now. Because you were trained like that. You remember when we were growing up? If my dad says, Funke, you know what it means. Funke, you know what I mean? 
What you hear is different. So some of you, once somebody says, oh, I've been looking for you, your heart goes, what, 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 what did I do? Because that's how you were trained. Nature, not your culture. So the old man, before he exited, trained you to think in certain ways. That's why you should renew your mind. That's why they say, put off the old man with his what? His deeds. That is why some Christians, you cannot tell the difference between them and unbelievers. Are you following what I'm saying? They still behave like, un like unbelievers. In those days when we got saved in the 70s, they would say, for you to know you are saved, the things you used to do, you don't do them anymore. Were they right? No. Can somebody tell me what it's, how did you get saved? Who is a Christian? Who is born again? Quickly, tell me how you got born again. Tell me what it is to be born again. To be very quick, uh, Lucy, tell me quickly. What makes you born again? The things you used to do, you don't do them anymore. Is that what makes you born again? I want to hear you. Make sure you come tomorrow. Don't run away because of this. Don't say, hey, maybe it's me, they will call tomorrow. Because, you know, we come, we preach. Your pastors will preach, but nobody knows what you retained. I many people knew that all of you, most of you did not even know the theme. So can you see this? So please tell me quickly. Eh? In Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what makes you to be born again. As Lord and Savior. God bless you. Put your hands together for her. Amen. You know, if I had the power, I would have ordained you as an apostle. But don't worry. Another. <laughs> that is a simple. Romans 10 is very clear. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you confess him, then you are saved. Are you someone listening to me? What makes you born again is not the old things I used to do. I do them no more. No. But now that you are born again, should you continue in sin? No. Because the old man had trained your members, your mind, your body. But now you must know. The Bible says, reckon yourself dead to sin. I went to righteousness and sin not. Can somebody say Amen. You must awake now to who you are. A new sheriff is in town. Can somebody say amen? amen? So you put off all those things and say, that was who I used to be. Now I don't lie anymore. I don't do those things anymore. Because this is a new man in Christ. A new creation. When I was saying this in the UK, I told them, you know, in, in, you know, yes, I'm in Africa, so that's good. You know, oranges in the UK is orange color. But you know, in Africa, Brazil, and all of that, our orange is yellow when it's ripe. Is that not true? So when an orange is green, you deem it not to be ripe. Now, if you saw a, a green orange, and the person selling it is trying to convince you that this orange, though green outside, is sweet inside, how many of you will be convinced? Put up your hands. When you see the green orange, you judge it as not being right. That is how it is. When you are as a believer, live as an unbeliever. Even though inside of you, you have Christ. You are born again. You are a new creation. But you must put off that old man with his deeds. Let's go to the next verse. And have put on who? The new man. Who is the new man? If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. That new man is the man in Christ. Can someone say amen? If any man be in Christ. Paul said, I know a man in Christ. So how many new creations are here? Put up, wave. You see, let the devil hear you. Let him see your hands. Say, I'm a new man. I'm a new creation. The old is gone. You know, 2 Corinthians 5 did not say the old will go. He said the old is gone. And all things have become new. So he said, put on and have put on the new man who is what? Renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where I'm going is this. That new man is what? Renewed in knowledge. What does that mean? We just said now. You are a new creation. I'm sure you know that when they say new creation, they are not referring to your body. They are not referring to your mind. Your mind still needs to be renewed. You need to put your body on that. Can somebody say amen? You know, Paul said, I give my body a black eye. 
I put it under. I subject it. Let's after preaching to many others, I myself should become what? Disqualified. So you have to pummel your body. So when you when they say new man, it's referring to what? Your spirit man. But I said that new man is renewed in knowledge. Should I tell you what it means? Now you are born again. You are a new creation. Amen. What is the new creation? Your spirit man. Okay? Your spirit man. You see, you were not refurbished. Your spirit man was not refurbished. You are a completely new creation. Praise God. Completely new creation. Not refurbished. Not repaired. Completely new. The old is gone. And that's referring to your spirit man. That's why he said, put on this new man. Now, now that you are born again, the spirit man is born again. You are a new creation. How many people know that you need to now get into knowledge to know who this new creation is? That's what they will say. Let us introduce you to your new self. James tells us that we, the, the, the perfect law of liberty, he that looks into that perfect law of liberty. So what that tells me is that every time I'm getting into the word of God, I'm seeing who this new man is. Can somebody say amen? Because it's not enough to be born again. When you got born again, yes, you got born again, your spirit man is a, you know, you, you became a new creation. But you don't know that new man yet. The Bible says, as Christ is, so are we. Here in this world. Not so will we be in the street by and by, but so are we. So how do I know how Christ is? So for me to know who this new creation is, I must not get into the knowledge of the word. I must not look into the perfect love liberty. I told people that I've stopped using who I'm meant to be. No, who I am. When I'm not going to the knowledge of the word of God, the knowledge of the word of God helps me to know, the word of God helps me to know who this new, crea this new man is. Created, hallelujah. Renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. That new man, the Bible says in another place, created in true holiness and righteousness. So the more I get myself exposed to the word of God, the more I'm knowing who this new man, who I have become, is. The Bible says grace and peace will multiply to you through prayer. No, through the knowledge. You can pray for grace and peace from now to kingdom come. You are wasting your time. The Bible said grace and peace being multiplied through what? The knowledge. The new man is renewed in knowledge according to the image. So when I look at who Christ is, I see who this new man is. Hallelujah. Jesus said the works I do, you shall do and greater works. So I'm seeing this new man. Can somebody say amen? I'm seeing this new man. But that knowledge is not going to be automatic. I'm going to study the word of God. I'm going to get into the word of God. And I'm going to know that this new man is a love child of a love God. That this new man has the ability and the capacity to love. That the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. That this new man is not ruled by my feelings. Hallelujah. So that knowledge is so important. What I want to say to us today, live with us today, because this theme is a very powerful thing. It says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is that victory? Even our faith. And who is he who has overcome the world? He who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What I want you to go home with today is the just shall live by faith. The Bible says this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. You see, this new man needs to be, needs, you need to feed yourself with the knowledge. The knowledge. Can someone say knowledge? Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Can someone say amen? You are no more afraid of what is afraid of you. Now you know who you are. You know the story of that um, lion, the cub? The cub is a baby lion that was abandoned by the mom, maybe by accident or no, I don't know. The lioness abandoned this cub, this cub 
And this cub was picked up by a shepherd. And the shepherd had sheep, lambs, and raised this little lion among the, the sheep. And then the sheep had been trained that whenever you saw a lion, you run. Is that not true? So whenever a lion appeared, that was why David was saying, whenever a lion came, I went after the lion. So lions will always look for meals in the sheep. So this shepherd had trained the sheep and the lambs to run. So this lion will come and all of them will run, including this little lion. Because he didn't know who he was. That's why I said you will stop running from what is running from you. You will stop being afraid of the dark. You will stop being afraid of the devil. You will stop saying, oh, let me be careful how I talk. Let the devil come and hear me. It's for his benefit you are saying it. You know why you are afraid of the devil? You have not yet sat with the scripture that says, Jesus destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. How could you be afraid of what has been destroyed? This new man must be renewed after the knowledge. You must have knowledge. Gloria Copeland says something. The devil will not mind you doing anything. But the moment you want to get into the world, because he knows that that is what will free you from him. Why should you be afraid? If you actually had the revelation that Jesus destroyed him, who had the power of death, that is the devil. He brought him to naught, made him of no effect. The Bible also says that having spoils, not about to spoil, having spoils principles and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in his cross. So why should you be afraid of principalities and powers? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You know, some of you, the way you do the wrestling, you do the wrestling as if, you know, you are fighting some, you know what I mean? You know, there's a way you wrestle when you know somebody is destroyed. And there's a way you wrestle when you think somebody still has power. How much after all, the Bible says we wrestle. Hey, wrestle and so what? So if you are wrestling against somebody who, 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 who is an idiot, who is useless, is it the same as wrestling against somebody who has, and the Bible says Jesus Christ was made manifest that he might destroy him who had the power of death. So he destroyed the works of the devil. So these are the scriptures you should be armed with. So it's all about, you know, don't let the devil hear you. Oh, let's be careful. You know how the devil is. I don't know how he is. But I know what the Bible says about him. All these things are already in the past tense. He destroyed. He spoiled. In the past tense. And he gave you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. So you have to renew. You have to get into the knowledge of who you are. The truth will set you free when you know it. Can somebody say amen? amen? The victory that has overcome the world is our faith. Those who are born of God, they are those who overcome the world. It's not a cheap thing for you to be born of God. You are born of God. You are an overcomer. And this is the victory. Let me give you some more scriptures and then I'll stop. See what Paul was saying in Galatians 2. You see what he said again in verse 19. For I through the Lord died to the law that I might live to God. Praise God. So the old man is dead and you are now a new creation. Verse 20 is where I'm going. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, you know what that means? That is the life you are now living in the body. This is your current life. You know, Jesus was praying for the disciples and those who will believe through them. In John 17, he said, I'm not only praying for them, but those who will believe through them. And he said, Father, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but that I should protect them. Can someone say amen? So the life you now live in the body, the life you now live in the flesh, hallelujah, the life you now live, your current life, your present life. But when you got born again, God did not kill you. He didn't take you out. Jesus said in John 17, I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out. But you have not, left, you have not been left here for you to be the punching bag of the devil. For the devil to slap you anyhow. 
So can someone say the life I now live in the flesh? I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the theme for tonight I'm living with you is what? The just shall live by faith. The life will not live in the flesh. You see, there's no other way to live. That's what I want to live with you. I said all of that to get to this point. There's no other way to live. If you are going to live and really live, you have to live by faith. There's no other way. I want to say that to you. Because you must go home with something. And this is all I'm saying. I am saying to you. The just shall live by what? He said, I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out of the world. So we are here. But the life we now live in the body, in the flesh, we live by faith. In the Son of God. So under translation says the faith of the Son of God. Both of them are applicable. Faith in the Son of God and the faith of the Son of God. And I'm sure in the course of this, we will learn how faith works. Is that not true? But I'm laying the foundation for you today to say the just shall live by faith. There's no other way you're going to live. How did we get here from the UK? By faith. Can someone say amen? amen? How did we get here? By faith. You know, years ago, somebody said, oh, you know, sorry, we are living by faith. You know, we are in ministry, but we are living by faith. You know, you have crossed that word out. People who live by faith don't complain. So when brethren, you know, I don't know if they do this here. Ah, sister, we have not seen you. They say, I'm strong. What they are saying is that they are sick. And they are trying to do positive confession. How many of you know that that's not what they do by faith? That's, you see, it's, it's not positive confession. But they are trying that you should get it. That they are sick. So that person was saying, you know, we are in ministry. We are in ministry. We don't have anything. We are living by faith. Those who live by faith, those who don't have anything. So you have contradicted yourself. You have what? How can you say I don't have anything? I say you are living by faith. That is contradictory. Those who live by faith. You see, making confession is not to hint. You know, I'm very rich. So they will get it that I don't have money. You know, I came here by a brother, brother because I'm very rich. You're going to learn in this meeting also. You see, the life of faith is a, very, it's a life of discipline. Amen. It's a life of what? You will see people carrying money like this. Something you want to say, I give me some now. <laughs> but you discipline yourself. You discipline your confession. You discipline your utterances. Can someone say amen? You discipline your emotions. If you see anybody who doesn't live a life of discipline, they cannot live a life of faith. A life of faith is a, very, a life of discipline. You control your tongue. The Bible says your tongue will determine the direction of your life. You can't just live anyhow. You can't talk anyhow. It's a life of discipline. Can someone say amen? You discipline yourself to study the word of God. You discipline yourself to meditate in the word, to speak the word. It's a life of discipline. It's not a life of, you know, talking anyhow, behaving like everybody, I'm only human. You see, let me say something to you. If you're only human, then what happens to only human will happen to you. What befalls only human will befall you. That's why when they say there's a casting down, you will see exaltation has come. They don't call confederacy what they call confederacy. Don't fear their fear. Don't be afraid of what people are afraid of. Let the Lord alone be your fear. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? It's a life of discipline. Even your mouth is itching you like this, you will not say those things. Jesus said, take no thought, saying. You must understand, the just shall live by faith. The life will not live in the body. I remember years ago, I've told that story a couple of times. I'll say it again. My husband, it was this Kenya my husband came to years ago in the 90s. We were still living in Nigeria then. And I was coming to join him. No, not, not uh, I don't think we've met you. We've not met you before. We met you when we, after we got to the UK. So he was coming to Kenya, and then I was going to join him. So I was going to fly through Lagos. So I went to Lagos, and um, the flight was going to be in the night. So I was hanging out with some of our ministry friends. So they were talking about how tough things were. They were talking about visa, UK visa specifically. And they were like, 
we don't know what's happening now. They are just denying everybody, denying everybody. They were mentioning names of even big, big people in ministry. People that had been going before. But they just denied them. They denied. So they were just talking and talking. The more they talked. So after a while, you know how you'll be feeling like the old one out. I wanted to join. To say, ah, these people. But before I, as I was about to open my mouth, the Holy Ghost said, you, you know your multiple entry visa will soon expire. If you make any negative confession here, when you go and renew, they will deny you. And you will now say, ah, that's what people were saying. No, you brought it by your confession. That's how they say the Holy Ghost is our helper. I was about to, as I was about to, you know how you want to do solidarity? Let me break it down. Everybody's complaining. No money, no money, no money, no money. And you know God has been faithful to you. But so that you too can, you don't want to look like the old one out. You too want to join them. And then when you live like an ordinary person, you will experience what ordinary people experience. If they're experiencing sickness, that's what you will experience. If they're experiencing lack, I don't care what Kenyan shillings is to a pound. Why should you even judge your money by pound and dollars? Did they not say God will supply your need? According to pounds, his riches in glory. Because you have made dollars and pounds the benchmark. And that's why you have problems. And then you think in Nigeria, oh, a dollar is now, a naira is now this to a dollar. I'm not spending dollars. Can someone say me? When I'm in Nigeria, it's naira I'm spending. So why should you bother yourself with what dollar is to shillings? According to his riches. I don't know what they spend in Uganda. Uganda shillings. So what is your business with dollars? According to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. There's something they say where I come from. That somebody who is not married does not say my mother-in-law died. Do you have a mother-in-law? So what is your business? You are living in Kenya, you are worried about dollars. You see your problem? If you live like an ordinary person, you will experience what ordinary people like experience. You know what? I don't bother anymore wherever I go. I don't have to change anything to any whatever. Because in every country, there's enough currency there that God will supply. When you get to America, don't worry. Dollars are waiting for you. And you have more than enough dollars. Can somebody say amen? amen. We serve a faithful God. Can someone say the life I now live in the flesh? The life I now live in the body. The Bible says God has given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness. God knows what it takes to sustain you in this life. He knows what it takes. Because when you got saved, he didn't kill you. He left you here. So he knows what it takes. But you must live by faith. Can someone say the life I now live in the flesh? I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Bible says, whoever believes that Jesus is Christ is the Son of God, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Can someone say gives us the victory? Who what? Do you know what gives means? That's what continues. Who gives? Whatever is born of God overcomes. Not overcame. Over comes. Amen? The world. Thanks be to God who what? Gives. So whatever you are facing right now, look at it and say, I'm having the victory in this situation. And faith is that victory. Write down 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always, can someone say always? How many times? How many of you know what always means? Can someone say always means always? Always does not mean frequently. Always does not mean sometimes. Always does not mean usually. It doesn't mean often. It means 
always. Can someone say amen? Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Thank God for his knowledge. The fragrance, the aroma of that, prayer, of that knowledge. The Amplified says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph. Hallelujah. He always, so look at that situation. And say, weeping may endure boy for a night. Do you may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Look at that situation. And you're going to partner with the Holy Ghost, your helper. And it's going to help you to make sure you get victory. And the last scripture I want to give us today, Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things. In how many things? In some of these things. You know what I found out? And many people have been blessed by that because I told them in Kano on this last trip. When I read the Bible, I read it out. I want to throw that challenge. A lot of people have come back to give me feedback. That since I told them that thing, they've been doing it and they've seen the difference. You know in the Bible, when they say give attention to reading, they read out. When I'm doing my Bible reading, as I told you I'm doing yearly Bible, I read out. You know why it's good to read out? Number one, have you noticed that when you are, done, you are not reading out, sometimes your attention has gone. Your mind has gone to something else. That's number one you will find out. It helps you to concentrate better. But the thing there is this, when you are reading out, you are hearing what you are reading. You are hearing, is that not true? And so it is registering. Registering in your mind, registering in you. You're reading out. You know, when we were in school in those days, I went to a grammar school. I don't know what they do now. You would do comprehension. English what? Comprehension. The Bible says, yes, in all these things. In how many things? All. all. Not in some. That is whatever you are facing, even in that thing. In all these things, we are what? More than conquerors. Through him who loved us. I want to be on your feet tonight. Before we get into the second leg of the word. We are what? Whatever is born of God, overcomes. The Bible says the life that I now live in the flesh. Hallelujah. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Tomorrow when we come in the morning, if God allows us, we're going to build more on the just shall live by faith. There's no other way to live. That's why I say, how did we get here? If we listen to everything going on around, maybe we'll not even get on the flight. Oh, this person that went, had an accident, that one, that whatever, that one. You live by faith. I will tell you what living by faith means. Because if you have to live this life by faith, then you must know what it means to live by faith. We live by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. This life we live. I want you to begin to pray and begin to speak to God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how faith comes. We live by faith. We live by faith. We live by faith. Everything we do is by faith. And when we say by faith, by faith does not mean what religion. That's why I gave those examples. Oh, I came here by faith. And what they are trying to say is to code you that they don't have money. Oh, I, it is well. It's to code you. When you understand what it means by, to live by faith, you will stop using such words to code people. Are you following what I'm saying? When you know what it means to live by faith, because when they begin to say certain things, they are trying to code you. Oh, you know, I came here by faith. You will be like, oh, that means they don't have money. So they are trying to beg you for money. That is not what confession of the world is about. 
the just shall live by faith is what I want to leave with you tonight. And then when we come back, when, I, when we come back, I'm going to tell us what it means to live by faith. We're going to break it down. What does it mean to live by faith? Hallelujah. There are times you may have pain in your body and your body is telling you that you know you will not be able to make it. And you'll be like, you watch. I will make it. Hallelujah. Not only will I make it, I'll come back here. Everything around you is telling you something. But you're going to go into what the world tells you. That's what it means. One of what it means to live by faith. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. Just bless the name of the Lord. Are we ready? Are we ready for the second leg? I want you to talk to God and prepare yourself again. As the reverend comes up, God is faithful. I want you to just trust God that your life will never remain the same again. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the vessel you have used. We ask you to replenish her in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what we have learned. We ask that we receive grace to be doers of these things in Jesus' name. And as we get into the second leg, Lord, I ask you to anoint me afresh. Let your word go forward with accuracy and power. Let you do an eternal work in the hearts and lives of your people. Let Jesus be glorified. And let every saint be edified. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And the people say aloud, Amen. Amen. Are you glad you came? Let's put hands together for the Lord. Amen. Foundation. Amen. All right. So I'm just going to go straight and say faith is the tool needed in our lives from salvation to overcoming trials. What is our theme again? Put that theme back up there. This is a victory that what? This is a victory that what? Have you noticed that in the New Testament, nothing is automatic? Did you notice? Nothing is automatic. Why do I say so? Jesus died for the whole world. Is that not true? And there are some people who he died for that will still go to hell. Huh? Why? Because they didn't receive him. You will have thought that the fact that he died for them should make them go to heaven automatically. True or false? Okay. Welcome everybody. My wife has welcomed all of you, so me, I'm just getting straight into the message. Say it loud, amen. amen. So what I'm trying to let you understand is that, you know, I had in mind I was going to share my testimony of how I got born again, and when I got born again, how there was such a hunger in my heart for God, and we just began to lay hands on the sea, cast out devils, say amen. Long before we knew that there was a call into ministry, we were enjoying what the word says. Because I had this desire to say, if the word is true, I want to experience it. That should be your desire. If the word is true, I want to what? Experience it. And doesn't mean that you don't have faults. It doesn't mean because sometimes, like we all know, there are all these extremes to everything. The fact that you are getting results does not mean you don't have faults. And the fact that you are having faults does not mean that's the reason why you are not getting results. Am I talking? The days of ignorance, God overlooks. As you now grow up in him, he will now show you things. He said, how come these things were in my life and you are still getting me results? He said, because I overlooked them. Now that you are matured, deal with this one. Am I talking here? But when you see people who are not moving on, I was sharing with somebody, I said, you know what? That thing called personal development or growth in many cultures is not emphasized. What do I mean by that? If you see a young boy, today is two years old, tomorrow is three years old. 
Thereafter is four, and after that is five. Is that not true? As far as you are concerned, he's growing. So also, when you now got born again, you just count the years that you've been born again, and as far as you are concerned, you are supposed to be growing too. Hello? Let me tell you now. Religion, what people have made Christianity to be is a religion. It's a mindless game. What do I mean? Read your Bible. Come on and if you do you know that you can read your Bible and pray and not grow? You know why? Because you are doing it religiously, not meaningfully. The difference between true Christianity and religious Christianity is that true Christianity has something to do with your heart being involved in what you're doing. Religious Christianity just means come to church, come to church, say amen when we say hallelujah. How many of you know that you can say in Jesus' name and not have a revelation of what that name means? So there are many believers who have come to God but they did not open their hearts for the revelation knowledge of God's word to dawn on them. So they are just carrying on religiously. Did you hear me? Listen, in our church in UK, we have three words. We call them nature, nurture, culture. Say with me. Those three things have made their deposits in your life. People who are brought up in poverty homes, do they grow up to become prosperous most of the time? No, they stay in poverty. And you see how you test a poor man. Give him money. You know what will happen to him? In the next six months, he's back to where he was before with worse debts than he had before. You know why? Poverty was at work in him. You thought that giving him money will overcome poverty. But poverty has its hold on his soul. Poverty means not enough. Poverty means nobody appreciates me. Poverty means I'm not good enough. Poverty has many dimensions. Once it's in somebody's soul, if you give the person money, listen to me, he will plan for something that is beyond that money so that he can come back to where he was before. That's why Africans have not gotten rid of poverty. The white man gives Africa money. Is that not true? But has poverty gone? So when you embrace Christianity, please embrace it with your heart. We embrace it with reality. And that's why when Paul was praying that prayer, I was reading something today and the person was making it look like Paul was praying for unbelievers when he said, God will grant unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of their understanding. He said, unbelievers' eyes are not open. That's why they are not saved. Many believers' eyes are not open. Did you hear me? Otherwise, Paul will not say we should pray. We should not pray that prayer. The eyes of their understanding being enlightened that they might know what? The hope of his calling. You know what I love about that portion of scripture? It says that God will grant you what? The spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in what? In the knowledge of him. That means you can have the knowledge and not have the revelation of that knowledge. When Jesus told Peter, like my wife was preaching today, that Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. What does that tell you? That there is knowledge that flesh and blood does not reveal. When you read it, you are acquiring mental knowledge. But when you now let revelation dawn on you, it puts you in another position. And that's why Jesus went on to say, flesh and blood not revealed to you. And on this rock, which rock? The rock of the revelation that he is the Christ. That rock is upon which he built his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. How many of you know that you can know the Bible, but not have a revelation of that knowledge? Is it true? And if you don't seek the revelation, if you don't fellowship with God with your heart, your nature, not your culture, will be what is informing your attitude towards your life. That's why when you are brought up in poverty, you are brought up with a mentality that says you don't have enough. And if you are not careful, you will always believe you don't have enough, no matter how much you have. 
Did you hear me? That's part of culture. Culture is an environment where you grow up in. That's where if your own parents are always blaming, maybe they always consider one of your siblings, your brother or your sister, they are better than you. You will grow up with a low self-esteem. Is that not true? And no matter what you do in life, that thing will still haunt you until you learn to overcome it. Can I hear loud amen? amen? So this series, this what I'm sharing with us or what my wife is sharing with us is for you to embrace faith, not from the angle of I know the Bible, but from the angle of I'm applying the word of God in my life regularly and I'm getting results. Am I talking to anybody here? I am applying the word of God what? Regularly and I'm doing what? Getting results. How many of you know that if you have a low self-esteem, it's the way you were brought up? True or false? Low self-esteem. Should I explain what I mean by low self-esteem? I'm not good enough. Anything I do, I don't know why people don't appreciate me. Is there anybody like that in this house? If you are like that, don't put your hand up. So that nobody else will know. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Also, when there's poverty in your background, it's, it doesn't run away just because you got born again. It stays with you. That you modify it and express it in other ways, but it's going to stay there until you get rid of it. That's why I love what you just heard today. You are a new creature. Old things are what? You see, you are not very confident. Old things are what? And everything has become... What do you think those old things that have passed away? The old man. Say amen. amen. The old man is what nature you inherited in Adam. And the new man is the nature you came into in Christ. Can I hear loud amen? amen. Old things are what? See? Old things are what? Say it loud. Old things are what? Old things are what? You are the one to reckon yourself dead to those things. And alive unto God. Say loud, amen. amen. So this faith, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. amen. Faith is a tool needed in our lives from salvation to overcoming trials to fulfilling destiny to pleasing God and accomplish his purposes for our lives. Amen. amen. Our potentials are discovered, developed, and deployed as we live by faith in all aspects of life. I'm showing you the importance of faith here. Learning the different aspects of our faith life will go a long way in helping our prayer life. Did you hear me, somebody? And our understanding of the process God is taking us through to fulfill the destiny he has for us. Faith has to do with the believing with the heart. Let's go to the basics of what this faith is. Everybody say believing with the heart. Confessing with the mouth. And acting on God's word. Those are the three aspects of faith that I know about. You must believe, when you say believe with the heart, what it means is that believe independent of circumstances around you. Believe God's word. That's what it means to believe with the heart. Believe independent of circumstances around you. A lot of people don't know that that's what faith is about. If you don't begin to believe independent of circumstances around you, you're not about to experience all that God has in store for you. But people think that, okay, do you believe the Bible is true? Yes, you're a believer. No, you should fellowship with God to the point where he will reveal. Do you know even this subject of faith? If you get a revelation of what faith really means, you'll be a different person. If you get a revelation of faith, you'll be a different person. Because what revelation does to you is that it impacts to you the reality of a spiritual truth. Did you catch what I'm saying? You see... When the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, that's a truth in the Bible. Is that not true? But the day it becomes a revelation to you, the confidence with which you lay hands will be different. You know why? Now you know that you know that you know that you know that when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So by the time you lay hands and the person does not get healed, you will tell the person, go home, you are, you are healed. Why? Because the revelation has come to you. Am I talking here? A lot of believers don't know that even the basic things of the Bible, they, we need a revelation in them. 
When you hear, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Your mind goes straight to your job. It goes straight to you, your natural circumstances. Is that not true? But the day the revelation hits you that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. The day that thing hits you, you leave that place with confidence even though you don't have any money in your pocket. <laughs> Did you hear me, somebody? And that is the problem in the church. The problem is not that God is not real. The problem is that many of the people who are trying to serve God, they're not serving him on his own terms. They're serving him in their own terms. Did you hear me? What are his own terms? He's found in the Bible. What are your own terms? Your own experience. So which day would you make the transition? From your own terms to his own terms. His own terms says you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Your own terms says that nobody else knows what I've been through. Talk to me. I know myself more than anybody. Let nobody lie or deceive me. Am I talking? Whereas God is not against you knowing yourself. But he's saying, well, are you ready to relate with me? On my own terms. So if I now want to relate with him on his own terms, I should now say, Lord, your word says all things are passed away, but how come my poverty mindset has not gone? How come my low self-esteem has not gone? How come this, how come that? Then you let his spirit teach you how to move from your own terms to his own terms. Am I making sense now? But how many people do that? It's very difficult to do because many of us do not know. When James chapter 1 says, count it all what? Joy. When you fall into what? Diverse trials. For the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. How many people like their faith to be tried? They want to get the results instantaneously. Why try my faith? Hello? Okay, so I just want to encourage you to know that if you have come for this conference, please come with your notes and come every night praying that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding will be what? Enlightened. That you might know the hope of his calling and the hope of his glorious in what is the glorious inheritance is in the saints. And you might know the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. I love the insights that my wife shared with us that he walked it in Christ. So everything about God is first internal before it's external. Is that not true? So these things we are talking about, they are meant for your internal consumption. If you can internalize them, then you can externalize them in your life. Say, I receive grace. Amen. So I said, faith has to do with believing with the heart, confessing with the mouth, and acting on the word of God. In line, uh, acting on, on God's word in line with our faith. Almost everything we do spiritually needs our faith to be involved. Did you hear that? Almost everything we do spiritually needs our faith to be involved. <laughs> Confess, sorry. What we believe in has a great impact on our faith. What we say and how we cultivate our lifestyle all have faith as the ingredients we are to live we are or as the ingredients we are to, we have to live a successful and destiny fulfilling life say amen, amen. say aloud amen. amen how many of you know that you can be a believer and still believe things that are contrary to the bible yes. do you know that yes. you can be a believer but some of the things you believe they are deep seated so when you hear us talk about nature not your culture we're saying that the things that have been drilled into your psyche, into your mind, into your system, long before you got born again, if you don't confront those things, those things can still militate against you, even though you have now been born again. Some of you can give me examples from the way you are nodding. Is it not true? That there are many things we believe about ourselves, about our past, about our future, and they are not necessarily in line with the word of God. Even though we read the Bible, there's a blindness sometimes that does not let us see that what we believe is contrary to what the word says. So we're not confronting those things, and so those things are not going, and so they are militating against what God says. 
Am I talking here? How many of you know the same Peter who denied Jesus three times when Jesus died? That same Peter, when he now saw the man at Gate Beautiful, he said, look on us. What do you think happened to him? Talk to me. What do you think happened to Peter? As a human being, he couldn't understand that you are calling you the Christ. We are calling. He had had the revelation of the Christ before. We're calling you this. We're calling you that. How can they just treat you like this? So when they say, do you know him? Say, ah, hey, avoid me. Oh. But at a certain time after the resurrection of Jesus, at a certain time, Peter came into his own. When he saw the man by the gate, beautiful, he walked up and said, look on us. Can I hear an amen? He said, silver or gold? Talk to me now. Have I known? But such as I have, in the name of Jesus, and he pulled the guy up. Can you contrast that with the same Peter who denied Jesus three times? Talk to me. Did he not believe in Jesus when he denied him? He believed. But how come he is able to now have the confidence that the same Jesus and power in that name will raise this guy up? To the point where when they now were celebrating the guys, whatever, Peter said, why look on us? As if by our own godliness we made this man whole. Then he preached the gospel to them and he went on to tell them that faith in the name of Jesus has given this man his wholeness. Wow. How many of you would like to see that kind of transformation take place in your own life? You love to see it. Let's believe God for that, this, this conference. Can I hear loud? Amen. amen. Let's believe God for that in this conference. At least we've seen it in the life of Peter in the Bible. So we have to get rid of anything. We have to get rid of. We have to get rid of unforgiveness. We have to get rid of pride. We have to get rid of so many things in our hearts so that the revelation of the name of Jesus, the revelation of the power in that name, the revelation of faith in that name can make us whole. And not just make us whole, but through us make others whole. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? So as I'm still doing my introduction, I want you to know that you must make some commitments. Listen, commitment to evangelism, commitment to prayer, commitment to reading the Bible, commitment to praying for others. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's very important. Why? At the point where you fulfill your destiny, your life will be impacting many people. Did you catch that? This is the last point I'll make before I get into my notes. A lot of times we have what I call a need-centered gospel. What do I mean by that? How God will meet my needs. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? I mean, if you think if Peter was thinking about his needs, he would not go and pray for that guy. Would he go and pray for the guy? No. What we need as an adjustment in our mind is to have a purpose-centered gospel that I'm fulfilling the purpose for which God sent his son into my life instead of a need-centered gospel. And the basis for that scripture, for that understanding is Romans 8 verse 29. Let's put it on the screen. Romans 8 29. It says, we have been predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. Hallelujah. That he might be the firstborn. Huh? So let's read it together. For whom he foreknew, he also did what? Predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be what? The firstborn among... So you have a predestination. How many of you know that if you are predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son... It will be in character and in power. So when you are reading about Jesus in the Bible, you are seeing what the new man has the potential of doing. Did you hear that? And this one tells you that in God's economy, listen to this, in God's economy about you, when you are going through your trials, you are going through your tests, you are going through anything that looks like a problem, in the mind of God, do you want to know what he's thinking about? This. How is going to mold you to be conformed to the image? You are thinking about the needs being met. Is that not true? You are thinking about let others see that God is blessing me. But what he's seeing is conforming to the image of his son. You know why? In the beginning he said, let us make man in our, and after our, and male and female he created them. Is that not true? 
So it's not a case of man and whatever. Everyone has been made in the image of God. But what happened to that image? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Adam came into, was made in that image. Adam sinned. We fell and we all inherited the nature of Adam. That's the old man. Am I talking here? Now, when we have come into Christ, God's agenda is that you should be conformed to the image of his son. Because the son is the express image of the father. And you were meant to be in the image of God. You see the correct correlation? You get it now. You get the point I'm making here. So in God's economy, oh God, I need more money. He wants you to be conformed. Do you notice that in the life of Jesus on, in his ministry on earth, there was no need that was not met? Did you hear me? That means to the extent that you conform to the image, to the extent that you fulfill destiny, and that's to the extent that you will never ever have a need that will not be met. Can you see the point now? Thank you very much. You are getting it. These old timers are getting the message. I'm excited. See, when you get that understanding, then you yourself will cooperate with God and his word and his spirit to be conformed to the image of his son. And when you begin to do that, oh, not only will your needs be met, other lives will be impacted through you. Because that is God's agenda. Once you understand God's agenda, then your understanding will be helped. Amen. So you are not going to think of faith as something to use just to meet your needs. Those were the days of ignorance God has overlooked. <laughs> you see, we all had that orientation that God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. And he is in the business of blessing. But he has a higher purpose than that. Not just to bless you and uh, give you money or give you what you need, but to build you up to be conformed to the image of his son. I said to somebody, I said, there are four things that Jesus came to do on earth. Shall I tell you? Number one, he came as the express image of the Father. So if you want to know who the Father is, look at Jesus. Number two, he came to live as a human being on earth under the Father. As our example, he's the pattern son. Am I talking? I say he's the what? Pattern son. Number three, he came to pay the price so that you and I can become sons of God by his death, burial, and what? Resurrection. And then number four, he ever lives to make intercession for you on the right hand of the Father. What a complete picture. So when the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, he is the express image of the Father. Say amen. amen. He's the example of who God wants you to be like. Say amen. amen. He paid the price for you so that the wages of sin is death. So, but he, he bore the wages of sin. He bore all the rejection, everything you can ever suffer as a result of sin. Jesus bore it on the cross by his death, burial, and resurrection. And today, he's seated at the right hand of the Father ever living to make what? Intercession for you. You know what that tells me? That even your shortcomings are being catered for through his intercession. So why would you not cooperate with God and rise up to be conformed to the image of his son? In character and power. The son will do some things and he will say, is the father in me, he doeth the works. Ever say humility. Talk to me. He will say, he will do things and they will look at him and say, ah, he will say, the father in me, he doeth the works. You know what he's teaching you by that? Humility. He's trying to let you understand that I'm not here to be taking glory for myself. I'm here to representing the father. And you are here representing the son. Can I hear loud? Amen. Amen. So when you see results, who should you give the credit to? The son. He died for me. I would have been a nobody if not for the death. And God is at work in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Aren't you glad you've gotten the summary of the gospel? So let's now dig into faith. Hallelujah. In this study, I will look at it very briefly and then we continue. Amen. 
let's go back to that our first John 5 4 5 it says for whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is a victory that has what overcome the world even our faith who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God amen say a loud amen. amen one of the things I love about the faith message is Hebrews 11 let's go to Hebrews 11 it says now faith is the substance of things what hoped for the evidence of things not seen so what that tells me is this you see there's a lot that God has invested in you we call it potential say amen you cannot tap into your potential in God without your faith did you hear me somebody the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so if I read in the Bible I'm a new creature in Christ. All things are passed away. Everything has become new. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses, and has given to me the ministry of reconciliation. And I look at myself in the natural. There is no evidence of what the Bible says in my life. So what am I going to do? That's where faith comes in. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things welcome to the club say loud amen. amen i'm a new creature i don't feel like a new creature i don't see myself as i'm a kenyan i came from uh, whatever tribe you came from my poverty background my this my that no faith that's why it says faith is the victory anyone who believes in god believes that Jesus is the son of God has got the is, is born of God and has overcome the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even what your faith so what if I don't apply my faith the provision has been made but I will not experience it did you catch that how many of you think that if you have a problem now and you go and talk to God and God will say ah this your problem is so big let me go and think about how I can solve it. How many of you think that's how God thinks? <laughs> as far as heaven is concerned, almost every need of yours, the provision has been made. You know why I believe so? Because of the finished work of Calvary. So when the provision has been made, why are we not translating it into the natural? Am I making sense? This is where the problem is. Faith is the substance so if I don't have faith and I don't know how to operate by faith, I cannot lay hold on what has been made available. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and what? Evidence of things. How can you have evidence when you can't see the thing? <laughs> evidence of things not seen and the just shall live and in verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to hope. So what does that tell you? Let's read down that Hebrews 11 and see some examples of these people who believed in God. And the Bible records their stories. Hebrews 11, let's read that verse 1 again. Now, faith is the what? Substance. Everybody say substance. substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence of things what? not seen for by it the elders obtained a good testimony by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible by verse 4 by faith abel offered to god a more excellent sacrifice than cain through which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gifts and through it he being dead still speaks by faith enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. What was his testimony? That he pleased God. So God took him. Amen? Verse 6. But without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who, of those who seek him when they have time. Of those who seek him when they are less busy. Of those who do what? Diligently seek him. So you must know the condition. But let's look at the Noah story. 
By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things, not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. You know, Noah built an ark even when there was no rain. You know that? Based on instruction that God gave him. So when I'm saying faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, everyone who believes in God, believes in Jesus, has come to God through Jesus Christ, you already have faith. It's how to operate it now by overcoming. Noah could have been. Do you know they laughed at Noah when he was building the ark? Talk to me. Do you know Noah was mocked when he was building the ark? But he still went ahead and built it. Say a loud amen. So if you read the men of old, you see all the things that they went through. What about Abraham? When God told him to go to a place that he would receive as inheritance, he went out not knowing where he was going. <laughs> Abraham was such a guy. Even Sarah, when she was old, still gave, gave birth. Why is this possible? The evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen is called faith. But we are not going to have that faith until we are diligently walking with God. This is where the condition is. Can I hear an amen? amen? This is where the condition is. Let's read on because of time. We're going to continue. I'm going to continue this in my own series. And I don't want you to miss any of the word times. Please don't miss any. Because you know we have already said it that this is your time to make the transition. Let me say this. God impressed on my heart that your poverty days are gone. Your promotion days are around the corner. Amen. My wife already said it again, but God impressed on my own heart as well. You know, the days, I mean, you are, you are entering a new level of promotion, Amen. a new level of favor, Amen. a new level of protection, provision, and promotion. Amen. So I want you to take seriously this conference because God has some deep matters to unveil in a way that is peculiar to you. You see, it's one thing to hear what is being preached. It's another thing to hear what the Spirit of God is quickening inside you. You see, there are certain dimensions about each person's life that the Holy Ghost wants to deal with. But many people do not come with the mind of letting him deal with those things. They just come with the mind of religion. We are all in the meeting. We are all enjoying the word. That's good. That's step one. Step two should be, Lord, what are you saying to me? What are the strongholds that need to come down in my life? What are the areas of repentance I need to make sure I repent? What are the sins I have tolerated? Sins of unforgiveness. Sins of pride. Sins of thinking I am too much. When I should be giving the credit to him who, who called me in the first place. So those are the things that the Holy Ghost wants to minister to you peculiarly. Am I talking here? So that when he now finishes do, dealing with those things, he now tells you the steps you should take to enter this new phase that he has for you. Am I making sense? So I want to encourage you, please don't miss any of these sessions. As much as lies within you, don't miss them. Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear a loud amen? So, to understand faith, it's threefold. Believe with the heart, confess with your mouth, and act upon the word of God. Say loud, amen. amen. What do you believe? You must make sure it's the word of God. That's why the Bible talks of diligently seeking him. If it's just easy to just believe the word of God without diligent seeking, God will not say that without his mother and he is a rewarder of those who deliver. What does he reward them with? It rewards them with revelation, with understanding. Say amen. amen. If you're not hungry for God, you won't diligently seek him. Yeah. And you know what Satan does? He gives you things to make you satisfied. I read in one material, I said the last success is the greatest hindrance to the next one. The last success you just had is the greatest hindrance to the next one. Because in that one, you are satisfied that you have arrived. You are satisfied that you have made it. Well, God has something greater for you. Can you get back into your closet and re-engineer your hunger for God? And let God take you to a newer level. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. But you see, flesh has to be crucified though. That's where the problem is. The mind has to be renewed. 
Satan has to be overcome. All the tricks that he has offered us, we need to deal with them. Say amen. That's why when it comes to faith, you must understand the place of warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you noticed that that Ephesians 6, I'm getting ahead of myself now, when he talks about the shield of faith, then he says the breastplate of righteousness. Then he says the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Every one of those things, you will need faith to put them on. Did you hear me? You will need faith to put on the shield of, I mean, the breastplate of righteousness. You know what breastplate of righteousness means? You are covering your heart from condemnation. You are covering your heart because righteousness means right standing with God. Say loud, amen. amen. Shield. Shield of faith from every fairy dart of the devil. What does he send to you? Thoughts. Things that look legitimate. He will send them to you. Making you look like you are not good enough. Is you know that a thought can come to you that this thing you believe God for is not happening because you are not good enough. And that is not from God. But you can't tell the difference. It's a dart. If you don't put out your shield and you don't know how to put out your shield, that that will penetrate and it will affect your warfare and the enemy will take, have a foothold. That's not your portion in Jesus' name. Am I mean, making sense here? So a lot of times when we look at these things, we just read them religiously. Breastplate of righteousness, like my wife was saying to us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. Another portion says, Second Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, that... Um, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not what? Canna, but mighty through God to the what? Casting down what? Imaginations. Do you know the four things that are operating in your life? Ever say thoughts, high things, imaginations, strongholds. They all progress from thoughts. And when something has a stronghold on you, it has a stronghold. In fact, it blinds you to its presence in your life. That's why it's a stronghold. But if you cannot trace the thoughts, if you cannot, what are the weapons of your warfare? The name of Jesus, the word of God, the blood of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. If you cannot trace the thoughts, where it came from, you can't trace the high thing it has become. You can't trace the imagination then how can you trace the stronghold that has formed in you? Should I tell you one secret about African poverty? Poverty in Africa is a stronghold. Africa is one of the richest continents where natural resources are concerned. True or false? How come poverty is so strong? Because it's a stronghold. Am I talking? Do you know that God can raise you as a believer to influence your nation? And the political leaders of your nation will have to listen to you. And you'll be standing for uprightness. You'll be standing for righteousness. And like you've learned today, there's nothing that is called unchallenged faith. Your faith will be challenged. How many of you know that God is waiting for believers, apostles, bishops, pastors, who can rise up and then the authority in the political class Authority in the economic class, uh, whatever of their countries, will begin to reckon with them. And they will not be corrupted by wealth. They will not be corrupted by pride. They will not be corrupted by anything. And they will stand for God. And that's what is going to disciple the nations of Africa. Did you hear me, somebody? Because the systems have been built. The corrupt systems have been built. Anyone who wants to be righteous in Africa and get into politics or into government or into business, they will show you how the corruption works and the benefits that the corruption has made available to many people. If you don't know about faith, you don't know that your God supplies your need, and you do not have not built your faith in anything, you will back off and say, it's not for me. So the unbelievers will be enjoying it, and you will not know how. But if you know that God is your source, you will say, no, Corruption must stop. They say, sir, if you stop it, then you too will be short to you. You will be broke. You say, don't worry. My own God supplies my needs. That's what is needed. That backbone of strength. When we're doing these conferences, it's not another case of come and just read more scriptures, more Bible knowledge. 
It is equipping the saints. That's why we call it Equippers Conference. It's equipping the saints to be who God has called them to be, to do what God has called them to do, and to have what God has called them to have. That's what this conference is about. Equippers Conference. Not Bible study. Amen, somebody. I mean, you should go back to Uganda and then the president or the prime minister or wherever they say, I don't know why, I saw you in my dream and I feel that you will have something to tell us. You present the gospel to them. They will say, ah, this is not popular. Say, it's not popularity we are looking for. We are looking for seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. Are you ready for that? I said, are you ready for that? Well, well, God will help us. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Okay, so let's, for time's sake, let's just read some scriptures and then we'll see how far we can go. In Romans 10 from verse 6, it says, wait a minute, okay. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend unto heaven, into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Watch this. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in where? Your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. For with the heart one believes unto what? righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame can i hear a loud amen? amen for with the heart man believes unto what righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto what salvation so every provision that is in the bible through jesus christ your heart and your mouth must be connected what do you think Satan fights the most when it comes to your life? Your heart. He paints the picture of something that looks normal, natural. What you don't know is that whatever image your heart captures, your heart will reproduce it. Did you hear me? Let me say one more time. Whatever image your heart what? Captures, your heart will what? Reproduce it. You were made in the image of God. And God is a creative being, isn't it? Sir? So your own heart is creating your own world unknown to you. Have you noticed that when it comes to negative stories, people have more to say? But when it comes to positive stories, they, have, they just keep quiet. You know why? Satan, the God of this world, ensures that people's hearts are saturated with negative stuff. So he does not need every demon following you. You yourself... You are an extension of his kingdom because you have captured what he wants you to capture in your heart and you are reproducing it in your life. I'm not sure you heard me. So how can that be? Well, think about it. You grew up in poverty. Your heart captured poverty. Talk to me. When you get married, you will reproduce it in your marriage. Have you heard like father like son? Or like son like, how is it that the son follows what his father does? Because it was captured in his heart. So when he gets into his own future, he reproduces what was in his heart. Why did you think they said the imagination, cast down imagination? If there was no reproductive potential, potential in imagination, why would you cast it down? Am I talking? Am I talking? I mean, if Peter did not undergo his transformation, listen, the confidence he manifested in pulling that guy up was not a natural confidence. It was a supernatural confidence. Why? What did he expose himself to? Is somebody hearing me? What did he what? Expose. When my wife was saying we should read the Bible, we should read the Bible, I tell you, you need to, and I love what I heard today from her. She said, she reads it out. Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word. 
how many of you would like to paint a picture of a successful ministry, a life transforming ministry, nation discipling ministry? Talk to me, somebody. You like to capture that. What does it take to build that kind of image into your heart? The Word of God. Meditation in the Word. What people don't know about meditation sometimes is that meditation is not just thinking about the Word. There's another side of meditation that is speaking the word. Did you hear that? When you say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, greater is he that is in me than he that's in me. You're not just saying it religiously. You're not just saying it because you have to impress anybody. You're not just saying it because they said you should say it. You are saying it out of a depth of conviction that this is who Christ has made me to be. And for me to build that image on my inside, to build that conviction on my inside, I need to say it to myself. How many of you have noticed that when you hear another language, is the one that sounds like your name that you take notice? Have you, have you observed that? Talk to me. Have you observed that? Some of you have not observed it. Let me talk to the older people. Have you observed that, sir? Something that sounds like your name, you will notice. You know why? You have told yourself your name so many times. It has become part and parcel of your makeup. But when you hear anything that sounds like it, you look there. What if you built the word of God into your consciousness like that? What if you built the word of God into your consciousness like that? It will affect your prayer life. It will affect your speaking. When Jesus was speaking in Mark 11, you know what he said? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be what? cast into the sea and shall not and shall not but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said did you notice he didn't say but shall believe that the thing he said last night shall come to pass no he says those things he's talking about a lifestyle not just an event a lot of us wait for the event when the crisis hits. Pray for me, pray for me. Oh, oh God, God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Oh God. And then you go back to your normal lifestyle as if there was nothing that you learned. From this conference, by the grace of God, you're going to carry a new image on the inside. You're going to carry a victorious image on the inside. The labor of Christ on the cross and his death and resurrection will never be in vain in your life. You're going to walk in the victory that God has ordained for you. You're going to walk in the blessing that God has ordained for you. You're going to walk in the abundance that God has ordained for you. In the name of Jesus. And every stronghold in your life, we cast them down. We pull them down now in Jesus' name. Every wrong imagination, we cast it down in Jesus' name. And we take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's the name of the game where faith is concerned. That's the name of the game, my brothers and sisters. You must know that God has given you faith. But how you use it is up to you. Faith cometh by what? And hearing by? Should I give you another side of that story? Fear cometh by what? And hearing by? The words of the devil. You don't understand. <laughs> when he says you say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast and say, what he's saying is that your words carry weight. So all the devil needs to do is to give you the negative words and you keep speaking them. Oh no, I was just trying to describe my situation. Oh, I was just trying to explain to you so that you will understand where I'm coming. Oh, you know. Continue. When you finish describing it to this person, you describe it to that person, you describe it to the third person, you describe it to the fourth person, who else are you going to describe it to? You have built it into your own mind, into your imagination. You will reproduce it. How many of you know money is supposed to be your servant, not your master? Did you hear me? I said money is supposed to be your what? Not your... See your silence. <laughs> money cometh now. And money will start running towards you. Because it has no choice. Mountain, move now. Mountain will move. But if you have not developed yourself, if you have not been 
like we're going to learn about discipline. If you have not been disciplined in your words, in your thoughts, in your attitude, in your actions, and you are quick to repent of any sin. You know the Bible says that if we confess our sin, it's faithful and just to forgive us. Is that not true? First John 1, 9. Is that not true? You know what I learned about that? As far as heaven is concerned, heaven is ready to forgive you if you are ready to release it with your mouth. Lord, I was proud in that place. Forgive me. It's gone. Say amen. amen. Have you received something today? Yes. I've just been laying the foundation further. But I want you to know that God has great things in store for you. One last scripture, I hope, because I have many of them looking at me here. <laughs> James 1 from verse 2. My brethren, count it all pain when you fall into various trials. What does it say? Count it all what? What is natural about counting trials? Joy. Is it natural? Is it natural? No. Now, joy is different from happiness. Joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Say it loud, amen. Joy is different from happiness. He's saying, let's read it on before I begin to comment. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into what? Diverse trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or perseverance. Long suffering. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So it is going to take trying of your faith for you to rise up into maturity, lacking nothing. What Satan meant for evil, God is showing you how he can turn it around for good. Am I talking? So some people make it look like when they face trials, then maybe they've done something wrong and God is trying to punish them. God is trying to do this. You, you are not reading the Bible, though. This one says, count it all what? Joy. How do you count your joy? Knowing that the trying of your faith is what it takes for your faith to grow and for you to come into maturity. Let's go on. It says, verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking what? Nothing. How many of you would like to come to that place where you are lacking nothing? Well, count it all joy. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him do what? Ask of God, who gives to all what? Liberally and without reproach. You know what that tells you? When you are facing a trial, it's an opportunity for you to grow by your relationship with God so you can ask him for wisdom. The wisdom you would need to handle the trial you are facing. Say amen. amen. And then it goes on. It says, let him ask of God, who gives liberal, uh, to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways do you need any preaching on this or is it very clear count it all joy Ever, like we heard today there is no unchallenged faith when we talk about faith we are talking about substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen if you were the God of this world called Satan would you watch everybody experiencing what God has ordained for them without a fight no so he puts up a fight what are his own allies our flesh hello that the old man has trained hello the world system hello then his own cohorts did you hear me i've given you three things that are his allies satan's allies first your flesh your pride your lack of forgiveness all the old man's nature that's one ally second ally the demonic realm the cohorts of hell and the third ally the world system what do I mean by the world system? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Those are the systems in the world. If you don't know how to deal with those things, it will affect your faith. Am I talking? But the scripture we're looking at here says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will produce patience in you. And let patience have a complete work so you might be complete and perfect, lacking nothing. That means that faith works through long suffering and patience and when you allow that to happen you will be complete say loud amen now when you face new challenges you've never faced before he says anyone who needs wisdom who should you ask god 
and he will give you the wisdom. But do you know that if God gives you wisdom, what is in you determines what level of wisdom you can accept? Did you hear me? Let me say it again. If God gives you wisdom, what is in you determines what level of wisdom you can walk in? <laughs> How many of you know that if David did not sell himself out to God and he felt the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear, he would deliver me from this giant. Excuse me, lion and bear and giant, are they the same? Talk to me. The lion, you met him privately. The bear, you met him privately. This giant, many of your so-called Jewish brothers and sisters have run away from him. And he's boasting publicly. It takes somebody who has been sold out on God to expect the God who dealt with the lion privately, dealt with the bear privately, to now deal with the giant publicly. Am I talking... So a lot of times when we read these things, we just make it look like, well, that's the Bible. That's why I say people can read the Bible and not grow because they're not internalizing the principles of it. Am I talking here? Count it all joy when you fell into the driver's trap. That means David counted it joy. He looked at his father's sheep and said, you lion, you are not going to take this sheep. And he went after the lion by faith. And he saw God deliver him from the lion. Say amen. And he remembered that. When he saw the bear, he went after the bear by faith. And he saw God deliver him from the bear. And when he now came to the giant, <laughs> hey, David said, the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver me from this. I'm here to prophesy to you that the God who has given you silent victories in time past is about to give you the great victories in the name of Jesus. He's about to give you outstanding victories. In the name of Jesus. I tell you, you are going to leave this conference a different person. You will look at your giant like this and say, the God who delivered me from that negative dream the other day and the God who supplied my need to pay my rent, he will deal with you giants. And when the giant speaks to you and you're hearing all kinds of negative thoughts, you will be speaking back, countering every thought that that giant is bringing to you. And you walk towards that giant with a sense of victory. That's an example of faith. Am I talking? But if David allowed fear, walk of the flesh, if he allowed the fear that was prevailing and everybody was running from the, the, the giant, will David take that step? No. God is going to help us. I said God is going to help us. So I want to leave this with you. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. For the trying of your faith work at what? Patience. And let patience have his entire world. And if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. But he says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Stop being double-minded. Be single-minded. You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have, and you can do what God says you can do. Don't be unstable. Don't be double-minded. Don't be double-minded. What's double-mindedness? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. You see, before this conference ends, you should declare some things into the realm of the Spirit. You should release your faith. Apostle uh, Bishop Ochocho, Uganda will never be the same again. Uganda's salvation has come because of this conference. You, each of you that are pastors in your own right, release your faith that your churches are not going to remain the same again. You are going to have the resources you need to do everything you need to do. Money will no longer be a problem. You are not from a poverty background again. You are from God's background. God who has answered your little prayers in time, but he will answer the big ones. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I believe God wants to do in this conference. Everybody's going to leave this place with a new mind. With a victorious attitude. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Let's bow our heads to pray. I want you to talk to God right now and thank him for what you've heard today. Thank him for his goodness and mercy. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Father God. We thank you for everything that you have helped us to share. And we pray that all your people will be blessed. 
All your people will walk in the light of these things. Father, anything that the enemy is using to hold anybody back, we cancel it now in Jesus' name. Every stronghold, every high thing, every, every, every imagination, we dilute, we diffuse, we destroy in Jesus' name. And we release our faith that God's word will be built into their lives, built into their hearts, built into their circumstances. And they'll be doers of the word, speakers of the word. East and Central Africa will not be the same again. In the name of Jesus, souls will be saved. Souls will be healed. Souls will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The godly men and women will prosper. And their prosperity will be used to advance the kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people say aloud, Amen. amen. I'm sorry for that. Amen. We thank God for his faithfulness. God has been faithful. And um, we've really been watered. We've really been blessed. We've really been built. And I trust God something great has happened in our heart in Jesus' name. I've heard Reverend say several times that um, money is our servant, not our master. But today it hit me in a different way. And I began to ask myself, for sure if that statement is real, why then money has not come to a place where it is serving me? And if there is a season and a time for money to become my servant, it's now. That money is no longer my master. We have been blessed beyond words. I want us to stretch our hands and pray for our parents who have blessed us. God has really visited us in a very great way by the revelation of his word. They have poured so much into our hearts. We are trusting God that the heavens are going to be able to give them more for the sake of our lives, for the sake of our nations, for the sake of, our, of, of everything that concerns us because God is a faithful God. Father, we thank you so much for reverent Dad, thank you so much for every mom. You've used them to be able to water our lives. And the source of all that they've said is you by the Holy Spirit. We come to you with the thanksgiving because of that which you have used them to be able to speak to us. And Father, we pray because you are so concerned about us. You elevated them, you called them, you preserved them. You've sent them, oh God, to be able to become a blessing to many generations. We pray that grace and peace and insight and, st and strength is their portion in Jesus' name. Let their hearts be filled with the grace and more insight and wisdom and the power that is coming from on high. Let their lives, O oh God, receive more that the finished work of Calvary has made available for the sake of their lives and for the sake of many generations. We thank you. They blessed us. Bless them abundantly. We give you praise. In Jesus' name have we given thanks. Let's give Jesus another mighty and clap offering. Amen. Amen. I'd like to call my wife to come so that uh, as we are giving, she can be able to uh, take us to the next um, phase. Let's, thank you, thank you. Buona Sifiwe. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for the session.
We thank God for the powerful message that we have received and we thank God so much for our parents and for the way they have given themselves to be able to be used of God. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are grateful. I want to also say that we welcome all the delegates that have arrived today for this meeting. We thank them so much for coming and we do welcome each and every individual in Jesus' name. I wish to be able to give us the, uh, the program and how we are going to be able to have our uh, meetings going on to tomorrow.